Jackson Radio Show. Welcome back, everybody. The Democrats are getting a dose of sanity. Yep. Uh, drug addicts, uh, people that are on drugs. I've never used drugs, but one of my buddies would say to me, he'd be telling a story and he'd be high. He'd say, yeah, man, I was all high, you know, and then this cop pulled up and I got my snap. And I was like, you got what? He's like, I got my snap. And I didn't know what that terminology is. You know, you guys know what that is? Got your snap. Yeah. Well, I'm not going to ask you how. I don't want to get into your business. All right. But my buddy explained to me getting your snap means it ruins your high. All right. You ever, people, people use the term. You're such a buzz kill. Yeah. Because they're all high and you're like, boy, what you doing with your feet up on my table? You know better than to get your feet on my table. You know? And they're like, oh, man, you're such a buzz kill, mom. You know, because they get it. They understand it. Somebody snaps them back into the reality of what they're doing. That's what the Democrats are. They're a bunch of drug addicts, drug, uh, what do they call them, head cases. They don't even know what they're doing. They're just out there doing stuff because it's, it's just cool, man. It's meant to be fun. Yeah. Hey, I tell you what. Let's say that Donald Trump colluded with the, uh, with the, uh, the Russians. <laughs> yeah. And we'll get a British guy to make it up. And then we'll get the FBI to pretend that that's real. Eh. It's like a bunch of, I mean, that's what it is. It's like dope heads, crack heads. And then they get caught and they get their snap. <gasps> oh, shoot. They found out. <laughs> Buzz kill. Mm-hmm. Democrats are getting a good dose, dose, a dose. <laughs> They're getting a dose. <laughs> They're getting a dose of sanity. And the truth has a way of doing that to you. You know, imagine you're a drunk driver, right? You're drunk, drunk, drunk. You're driving along and boom, next thing you know, man, you've hit something. And that that jolt of, oh, shoot. And you may still be drunk. I mean, your blood level is drunk. But the dopamines that hit your brain that, you know, that, that go bang, something bad just happened. They hit you and they they snap you out of that thing you were in and make you go, oh, crap. And then you start to realize all the bad things. You start going back over those choices. Dang it. I knew I shouldn't have driven. I knew I was drunk. I knew this was it. God, I never thought this was going to happen. You ever had those kind of regrets? I mean, here's one. Be careful how much you drink. Remember, alcohol loosens inhibitions. So you may end up doing something you regret or worse. Hmm. Something worse than something I would regret. Hmm. Something so vile and, and it just a crime against humanity, so amoral that you don't even regret it. That's how sick and awful it was. You psychologically cannot afford to regret it, or you will kill yourself. You zoom right past regret and head straight to denial and justification. That's how awful that thing was. <laughs> Remind you of anybody? <laughs> Kevin Jackson here. It's the Kevin Jackson Show. I love the humor. I lo- you know what I love about humor? Humor reminds you of, the, of real life. Yeah. It reminds you of it. And the Democrats are living exactly what David Cross, the comedian, is talking about. They zoomed right past regret. It isn't about regret. It's about the cover up now because they got a dose of sanity. Boom. They hit that car. Oh, my gosh. They hit four cars and finally snapped out of it. As my dope smoking friend, dope using friend would say, got their snap. And now they're trying to cover it up. How can I get out of this? Are there traffic cams? <laughs> Did people hear alarms going off on cars? People looking out the window. I think I could get away with it. <laughs> so their cars clack, 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 <laughs> away from the scene of the crime. That is exactly how I see this happening with the Democrats. Regrets. Don't want to admit their guilt. Doing anything they can to 
for subterfuge, knowing that they've been spotted. They're on traffic cam. They got people that have cameras looking out at the cars. They got people coming out of houses. They got cars whizzing by. Multiple people have seen the crime scene. We can still get away with it. You want to know why? They're so used to getting away with it. When McCabe got fired, James Comey was tweeting, uh, stood tall under attack from small people. Did you guys hear about this? He's fighting from his subterranean rat hole, but that hole's going to be filled with water and he's going to get flushed out because he's going to be before the man. This disgraced former director of the FBI decided he was going to comment on the dismissal of his number one. Yet another embarrassment of this formerly venerable organization, Andrew McCabe. And so uh, uh, Comey's like, Andrew, you stand tall, man. Yeah, revenge of the midgets. Hours after it was announced that McCabe would be stepping down from his post at the FBI, the former disgraced James Comey responded. In a tweet, special agent Andrew McCabe stood tall over the last eight months when small people were trying to tear down an institution we all depend on. He served with distinction for two decades. I wish Andy well. I also wish continued strength for the rest of the FBI. America needs you. You ain't fooling nobody, man. That's the former G-man who lawyered up. I trust that statement as much as I trust Mexican water. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, No moleste. (laughs) No moleste, por favor. Who exactly are the small people that Comey's talking about? Hmm? The American people? Because all we big Americans want is the truth. The small people tearing down an institution formerly represented by this six foot eight inch cream puff named James Comey are the people that work for Comey. And despite the damage that's done by the FBI to itself, the fake news press wants to paint what's happening here, folks, as a Trump vendetta against McCabe. But we know the truth. The world knows the truth. The people who are and it, it, it guilt at guilt, I guess that we, they're guilty. The people guilty here are the, the FBI themselves and all the people complicit. The people who leveraged the nation's Federal Bureau of Investigation to unleash all its power on the Donald Trump. When you think about that, doesn't I mean, think about what it takes to fight the, the system like that and to come out on top. Man, do we owe ourselves a pat on the back. Go ahead. (laughs) I'll wait. (laughs) CNN actually said this about McCabe. McCabe was a central target of President Donald Trump's ire toward the FBI over the investigation into possible collusion between his campaign and Russia during the 2016 election, election, as well as the bureau's handling of former Democratic rival Hillary Clinton's case. Yeah, that's what Trump was upset about. He was upset. Because they were investigating the corruption case. No, he was upset because they knew that they were lying about the why they should be investigating this case. He was upset because he knew he'd done nothing. And he knew that the FBI knew it. And this was all just a cover up to make Hillary look good, to give her some sort of protection. He's not mad. If the FBI needs to do its job, Donald Trump's not mad. You're not mad. I'm not mad. Who would be mad? If you have a legitimate beef and it involves the Federal Bureau of Investigation, go for it. But when you fabricate something, that's when the nation says, "Uh uh-uh, we're not going for that. Comey was in a similar position, they write, until Trump fired him in May. The Trump administration attributed Comey's dismissal to the handling of the investigation into the Clinton email server, but later Trump admitted he was thinking of the Russia thing when he made the decision. Exactly. He wasn't mad about Comey uh, doing what he was, you know, if it was a legitimate case. What he was mad about with Comey is Comey knew this was fabricated. But CNN wants you to believe Trump had some sort of vendetta. He just wanted to get rid of them because they were investigating him. No, they were not supposed to be investigating him. That's why he was mad. He knew it and they knew it. 
And what this FISA memo and all the other stuff we're learning is essentially vetting out is they all knew this. They were all complicit. If we operated in the real world, folks, the entire management team of the FBI and the Department of Justice would have been fired months ago. But due to the optics, deep state operatives are allowed to continue their sedition. But I think it's a setup. I think Donald Trump knows what he's doing. Much to his credit, he lets these leftists out themselves. He merely lies in wait as they come around him and then he springs these traps and the Democrats ensnare themselves in them each and every time because there's predictable, predictable rather as their Bible, Alinsky's rules for radicals. So soon, let me tell you folks, James Comey's not going to be tweeting nearly as much. He doesn't get that much prison time on the computer. Kevin Jackson on the Black Sphere Radio Network. Do you owe back taxes to the IRS or state? The secret to avoiding the IRS nightmare is to seek professional representation. My friends at Security Tax Associates provide the most cost-effective and ethical representation in the industry while helping to avoid seizures, levies, and wage garnishments. Security Tax Associates is here to ensure that the appropriate steps are taken to permanently eliminate any possibility of future tax burdens once and for all. For a free, no-obligation consultation, contact Security Tax Associates, 844-779-4177. That's 844-779-4177. 844-779-4177 or visit them at securitytaxassociates.com.